did not see this coming. You guys actually seem to like the last video, and now I'm gonna show you how I built this island that ended up looking a little bit like Mako Island. <laughs> So for the island, I was inspired by this Amazon movie, Swallows and Amazons. I looked it up and it's called Wildcat Island. That was the original intention, but like after I tried to see if I could mold it into something else. But in the end, I just went with Roblox as the default island and just added onto it. Does anyone else get picky when they have to find models for their build? At least this time I was actually able to find some trees pretty quickly that I liked and I just filled the area with them. I'm finding more little areas around the island that I have to clean up. I'm still having to delete these other islands in the distance. And now here's me playing around with the atmosphere effects. The whole point is making it look like it's farther out in the distance than it really is. Then selecting a decent sky for it, because the atmosphere effects will not work without a dang sky. Putting the atmosphere effects on hold, we shall continue with the actual island itself. Just adding little rocky borders around it, because, I don't know, it looks great like that. And then trying to fix the water as best as I can. However, I actually fully deal with the water at the end of this. And now, making the actual beach area, fixing up the sand. Honestly, playing with the terrain is fun. Especially if you like have a lot of practice with it, of course. I enjoy said building, honestly. and flood in the area with more trees. Here I'm just trying to like carve out a path so that way this, the map layout just kind of makes sense a bit more. And then here I go back to trying to see if I could find a decent sky for this. Like at this point I realized I just wanted some like mountains around the island. I wasn't having too much luck with it at first. So here I was just trying to see if I could just DIY it myself. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, but I think it just was like too much. I went back to just the default sky. Some of which I ended up saving up my inventory for a later set I could possibly build, because why not? And then here's me going through like 500 other options. This one wasn't so bad, but it still felt like it was too much. And I believe this is the one I went with. So now all that was left was to add the texture and we have our background. I also got some help from one of my best friends, Ghost. He built the set for the Anastasia animation, which you should totally check out if you haven't. So thank you to him for that. Now 
then started working on like the actual pathway that they will be walking down. And then here he is playing around with like the watercolor, which I completely ended up changing afterwards. And then the color of the rocks, just the terrain color. And here's just more footage of us just working on that area. And here is me bringing in the beloved characters just so that I could see how big it is to do like a little high test. He also brought in this like forest pack full of different things he could add to a forest build that I ended up using throughout the whole thing. I find it funny I struggled to find those trees when he had a literal forest pack that I could have used. Yeah, he used to build quite a lot back when we first met in RCC. Not so much anymore because, you know, life, but he still helps me when I ask for it. And then he's adding in little details here and there. Like, it's it's a forest. Like, forests are naturally beautiful, but it's like, I still wanted to make it like really as realistic and interesting to look at as possible. And now since that little pathway is basically done, you need to actually start in a little campsite area. It's just me adding like little balls of land over here before I would smooth it out.
adding in some more different types of terrain all around. But not too much of it. And now to make this area nice and flat so I could actually make their campsite. Again, going back and forth and just making little changes to different areas. And now, the most painful part, the most beautiful part of it all, after deleting all those islands, trying to even out the water to make sure that it looks alright. If I can just make it look good, then there's no need to generate new water, but I ended up doing so anyways in the end. And there we go. I finally started generating some new water because I was like, yeah, this isn't working out. Oh, but we were still not done. Still a nice little chunk of land that did not want to go away. But it's okay, because we were just once again generating new water, and now it's all nice and flat and evened out, yay. But then still finding things to fix. The funny thing is, I knew it wouldn't be visible in the shot, but I still just needed to fix it, so... <laughs> And now our island is starting to look like something. Except, there are a little too many trees. Now to just refine some of the atmosphere effects. Add some palm trees to the beach area. And last but not least, changing the watercolor. Saving it to Roblox. And we have our finished island. She's not perfect, but she looks pretty cute. And that is basically how I built the island that, again, unintentional ended up looking a bit like Mako Island. But again, I just used a default map and added onto it. If you want to see more behind the scenes footage, give this video like maybe 20 likes. Let's see 20 likes. Check out the previous video where I go into more detail about the editing, animating, and how voice acting it was like.